Hi everybody, Joshua here with the Heavy Piano YouTube channel. Today's video will be about Radiohead's Paranoid Android. So this one's a this one's a real doozy. So this is gonna be a long video today, and I'll just go through kind of uh, chronologically, I guess you can say, or I'll just go in the order of the song, and I'm gonna talk about chords and melody. Um, this will be based on my version. Um, if you haven't had a chance to watch that, um, you could watch that first to get an idea of kind of where I'm coming from uh, with my philosophy or just the style and energy I'm going for in my version. So let's go ahead and get into it. There is an, an okay uh, guitar tab you can purchase that will kind of give you uh, melody and chords to go off of um, if you're the kind of person that learns um, with notation rather than just having some guy on the internet <laughs> We make a faceless video with his hands at a keyboard, um, but I will try to break it down. I, it is my goal to help as many people as possible uh, enjoy playing this awesome, awesome, awesome song. So let's get into it. Um, it starts in C minor. So what I was doing at the very beginning was just doing open fifth on C minor. So our, our chord is basically C minor, but it's not outlined quite yet. We're just doing this rotating left and left and you know, kind of doing the, this open fifth. And then I will go ahead and outline the first chord, C minor. And then we're dropping the bass. We're gonna go C minor over B flat. Which is gonna go to F7 or an F9. The ninth will be the G there. So let me do that much again. And bring the bass note up to an A. I am using a repeating G on the thumb a lot for my for my rhythm. So kind of A, B flat to our next uh, more like solid chord to be G minor. So there are a lot of different ways to think of those moving notes in the chords. Um, I'll just kind of talk about it in a way that makes sense to me. So let's start again at the beginning of the C minor. We land on that G minor. Again, our bass note's coming up on the A and B flat. And then I'm gonna jump up here. So I would think of this as an E half diminished. So E diminished, fully diminished would be diminished seven when we have that D flat, but we're gonna have that D natural in there, which is kind of like a seventh, right? And just a D natural. You can also think of it as a C nine, but with a raised bass up to the E. So let me come out of the G minor. Notice their middle notes are going down. Okay, and then we're gonna go to G minor again. I come down to this octave. We're gonna have that walking note in the bottom coming up. Go, go to that E half diminished again. So I'm hitting that E and then I'm coming up to that kind of middle part of the keyboard. So let me do that much again with the chords and you can watch some of the notes and uh, I won't talk quite as much. us to C minor which is when the melody for the verse comes in so what I did the first time through because we'll repeat the verse progression twice um, I landed on my C minor and then I just started kind of with single notes uh, in my right hand with the rhythm in my left that's uh, let me see here I did start doing an octave on G I kind of like that sound on my piano excuse me and talk about what I'm doing. So again, starting with a single note, C minor, we're gonna walk the bass note down. 
So just like the introduction had the C walking down to F, right? It's kind of, it's an ambiguous chord there. I consider a moving chord. Um, I am choosing to keep, again, play that repeated G to create the rhythm. G minor. Got that little lick over the E half diminished. Those notes going down in the middle. Let me play that much again. Then we have our little interlude here, G minor. to E dim half diminished, and then we have our little progression again, starting with C minor. And then I consider this out of the verse, and we're into a, this three chord uh, pattern, um, starting with G minor, and it's like a G minor six. am I doing here? G minor 6. I have to play it before I can talk about it. Sorry about that. Okay, G minor 6, and I'm outlining the chord, playing the root in the fifth, and then coming up here. Repeating this little section. Whoa. <laughs> I stopped. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Sorry about that. I would call it F major with a six. F major seven with a six, and then it goes to E seven. So our three chords are G minor 6, F major 7, 6, E7. So between those three chords, I'm putting the melody over the top. Trying to bring out the melody out of the moving rhythm. And then I know I'm going back to C minor for the next verse. Um, so I'll kind of, you can do like a chromatic walk down if you want. I think I use some of those, some of that sometimes. Let me play that much again. So when I am drawing out the melody, I might not play as many of the outline, the chord outline notes. And then I'm playing the rhythm in between the left hand pattern to create like kind of some movement rhythm. Notice my fingering in the left hand. I'm using a four, five, four, crossover, thumb under. Man, I cannot. <laughs> if I stop to think about it, I uh, I, I make a mistake. That's funny. E, crossing over, C 
So you can tell I really do think in terms of just chords and I'm not necessarily thinking of the notes as I'm playing. Let's come out of that G minor, F major seven, E7, and then we're into our second verse. So this time, remember the first time through this C minor verse, I'm doing single notes and then some octaves, but this time I'm trying to fill out the chords uh, with extra fingers here. that second verse and noticing this time instead of, instead of my notes going higher I'm keeping them lower to follow uh, Tom's vocal pattern or vocal melody I played about the same way the second time through Second section, starting with the G minor six. So out of that E7, we're going to go to A minor, and that's actually a really clear cadence, E7 to A minor. So this is where we first have um, that A minor to what I consider A flat uh, lick. And I really pulled back here in my version. So you do that lick four times, however you'd like. Coming out of that, you can do a chromatic. Chromatic. So here's when we get into the seven-eight pattern. Um, chords are C, A flat six, B flat C. So I, I'll play the rhythm here, and I'll try to talk about what I'm doing. So let me come out of the A minor A flat lick. those notes down brings us to you know we have this melody up here and I try to make it different by kind of just hitting chords on beats and then bringing back in the rhythm kind of doing like an A minor 7 to A flat major 7 in, in my left hand kind of outlining that so coming out of there bum, 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 ba, da, da, bum, 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 rhythm so it's different from the melody and here's again we have the C a flat B flat 7 8 pattern
tom singing gets a lot bigger here i think i did kind of jumping around the a and the e to kind of outline the fifth sound of the a minor This time we have our pattern, the 7, 8, A flat, B flat, F, C. So after that big, that big line of melody line, let me start with that again. So you notice there's a lot of clashing going on here, right? We have this really clashy sound, kind of more A minor, and then I'm really clashing it, so you don't have to do that, but that's how I like it. big I'm just going back and forth between the A minor A flat major 7 You can play around with this as many times as you like So our next kind of group of lick that I tried to hit instead of just improvising is another 7-8. Again, it's over the, the C, A flat, B flat, F, C pattern. And this is going to start on G. So I have those four, four bars of that C, A flat, B flat, F lit, uh, chord progression on 7-8 with this over the top. And then definitely resolving to F there. Um, let me talk about that slowly. you can kind of see what I'm doing with my left hand there. I can't slow down too much or I <laughs> lose my, mo my momentum. Starting on A natural and C in the left hand, just doing those half steps down. I think uh, the F sharp to F. I kind of like that finality of that. And then I just did a big arpeggio up to F with my left hand doing fifths. To kind of draw that out. And on my acoustic, I really did let it blend into the next section. So now we have kind of this, you know, the rain down, the, the pre-rain down section where we're introducing this chord progression here, starting with C minor. So we have C minor. G over B. Here's a B B6, because we're hanging on to that G. And like an A, A7. You can put the seventh in there. D minor. This is an A, but I play it A over C sharp. I like that sound. I'll play both, so a D. Either is nice. To D minor again. D minor over C. B. Um, B flat, yeah. I'm going to make it B flat 6. F over A. I really liked the sound of the E and the F in, in the context of this chord on my acoustic piano. G minor. Again, I like the sound of those notes together in the, in the context of that chord. So G minor 6 to F. Adding sixth all throughout there. Um, F6, E, E7, or E sus, to A, A sus, to 
to A, and then we'll come into rain down. Let me play that much slowly with the chords and you can watch the lots of notes without me interrupting with my voice. So the progression is pretty much the same for the rain down part. Um, I played the moving notes in the middle here, outlining the chords, and then really tried to draw out my melody notes um, with my pinky. So I played this through, what, three times, this progression three times with the with the lyrics, right, or the melody. So the first time through, I kept it pretty simple, right? And then the next time through, I did a triplet pattern with the upper note. So let's see here. So um, coming into... goes up to the G upper note. So lots of those big notey chords kind of stretching the chords out and rolling them. Starting with a clear uh, triplet pattern and then kind of like really letting it uh, kind of like I like to think of it like you're dropping you see like a slow motion like somebody dropping water or gel and it like spreads out like this um, like colored blue gel like spreading out it's kind of what I'm thinking of when I'm playing that section there So now the third time, our melody changes a little bit, the chords are the same. On my piano, um, and it really would have been served a lot better by a big, like a proper grand piano, but um, you get the idea. So um, we're gonna do these big, deep octaves down here. Look, our old friend repeating G up here to kind of keep some movement. It's a little bit different there. It's, it hangs onto the E instead of resolving to the A at the end of that progression. Um, but yeah, real big, meaty octaves on the left to drive it forward. Um, let's see, coming out of that. God loves his children on that E. E sus. Where does that one resolve? To the A minor, right? So we have our lick again. So here is another little lick that I've tried to get in. Um, again, our progression, our 7 8 progression, progression you may remember from earlier C, A flat, B flat, F, right? So. Coming into that progression, the 7 8. You know, and I'm just like really 
splattering the chords and it's messy and it's loud. So here's another 7-8 group and this is going to bring us to the end of the song and I wanted to try to get these notes in there and I wanted it to be brash and messy and splashy. Um, again, our progression, C, A flat, B flat, F, 7, 8. So uh, starting on A, and I'm doing octaves. And then hitting that lowest note on the piano, at least on my piano, uh, that A, and then getting out of there. So, man, that's a lot of information and a lot of chords, and I'm just kind of haphazardly talking about it, but I hope it's helpful for somebody. Um, think about, plan, like, when you have those repeated uh, licks. You can hang on to different notes to kind of make it different so you're not just playing the same thing every single time um, thinking of the emotional impact of going up in octaves you know where are my notes leading me to thinking of you know okay so if I come out of the um, you know the finality of that chord allowing a little bit of time breathing and then you know, how do you want to transition from each section? Um, how do you want to make the sections different? So, you know, I I did those higher octaves here in this section. And then I used some of those patterns when I when the melody came back in. You know, really trying to treat this note differently from the moving notes in the left hand and in the middle in the lower part of the right hand. And then, you know, Um, changing up the rhythms and adding some complexity to the rhythm. Um, I, the you know there's those three licks that I was really trying to focus or make sure I got some form of in there on over the seven eight. There's that one and then there's this one. And then uh, at the very end. Uh, those are some things that I was thinking about. I would think of the chord progressions and the melody, and I'd really try to focus on singing uh, the melody. Uh, unfortunately, on my acoustic, um, some of the worst notes on that piano are like right in this range, which is where, you know, the rain down section and then the... So it was a f kind of almost a fight to get the melody the way I wanted there. And um, I don't know if it's exactly the way I wanted it, but it did capture the energy and emotion that I wanted to share with everybody. So think about how things sound on your piano as well. dynamic piece with lots of different changes. I hope that was helpful. At least you could maybe, you know, learn the, the rain down section from my video. But a big thank you for everyone watching and to my patrons on Patreon for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll keep doing Radiohead. I have a bunch of patron requests I'm digging through right now. So I, and I am, I am behind on my requests. So I appreciate your patience. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch everyone next time.